Hello, good morning, welcome back to the sewing room. My name is Gabrielle. Today I'm going to go through what my year was like, 2023. Thought it would be nice to just see where I currently stand as a small business at the end of 2023, the 31st of December. Alrighty, so 2023 was a pretty, let me just get comfortable. 2023 was a pretty successful year for Silk and Sticks, which is always nice. Um, it's the third year I've been running my little business, so it's three years old. And yeah, I'm very happy with the progress that I've made this year. Um, so talking about markets, I did between 12 and 15 markets. I tried going through all my Instagram stories and posts trying to figure out how many markets I did but yes between 12 and 15 I think this year which is pretty good so it's a market a month um some months I was doing two I know the ones I did before Christmas I did three in five weeks which was exhausting and probably won't do that again but yeah so it was a really successful year um I definitely have cut back on the amount of markets that I'm doing uh, I know last year I think I was doing more than one a month um, and that was pretty exhausting and I was really, I was doing too many, I think. Um, and if you do markets, you kind of know that feeling of getting burnt out. It's a lot of work of getting everything ready and organized, packed in your car, getting there, setting up, packing down, coming back home, unpacking. It's a big day. And sometimes markets aren't always that successful. So yeah, it's a good time. I definitely cut back on the amount of outdoor markets I'm doing um, because I live in Tasmania. So sometimes the weather can be incredibly unpredictable. I did some of my most successful markets this year um, where I made a very decent income and was very fortunate. I also did some of my worst markets this year. There was two markets where I didn't sell anything. So, you know, it's, uh, it's always, uh, I don't know that expression. What's that expression? I don't know, I'll put it on the screen if I remember. So my most successful item this year was definitely my Turbo Chook Socks uh, or Native Hens. They are a very fascinating bird, uh, the Tasmanian Native Hen. And I made the socks just because I thought they were really funny and cute. And I'm really lucky that other people found them really funny and cute. So I sold quite a few pairs of those this year. And I think my next best Stella was my hand-knitted ugly socks. So that's socks that I make with just all leftover bits and bobs of wool. Nice and colourful and, you know, ugly. And people really love those as well. In terms of making things, I made a lot of stuff this year and I would have touched on a lot of that in that first video. I'm going to run through the year now and talk about uh, my most favourite piece or activity thing that I made uh, in each month. So in January, that was my birthday month, so I made myself a little plaid skirt that I wore on my birthday when we did various outings and I love that skirt. In January as well, I also started experimenting with doing my hand printed socks so they eventually grew into the turbo chook socks but you know I was just testing the waters seeing how it looked so it was a fun month so in February I made uh, one of my ugly jumpers that my partner very kindly modeled for me um, ugly jumper was definitely one of the bigger projects I've done in terms of knitwear I've made a few cardigans and jumpers for myself but doing that much colour work and constantly having to tuck in all those loose ends, it was a huge project. Uh, in March, I started working on more ugly socks. Now, I didn't really know what the popularity of those socks would be yet. And yes, they were very popular, which is lucky. Um, and I also finished this really beautiful cardigan which I called my grandpa cardigan that was a lot of color work so it looked absolutely beautiful from the outside I loved the pattern and it was just chaos inside and I didn't want to sell it I really loved that cardigan it was so thick and luxurious it was a wool and alpaca blend yarn and it took I don't even know 100 hours I don't know it took forever I loved that cardigan that cardigan actually 
did get sold in the coming months, which I was equally happy and sad about because I didn't want to let it go. In April, I started working on my puffer vests. So puffer vests were a puffer vest uh, with a cotton out a cotton outer and filled with wool. So oh my goodness, they were so warm and I loved them and I'm really happy that other people love them too. I had made puffer vests previously uh, last year in 2022. Um, and in that iteration, they were very basic. It was just a slip-on vest with no closure system. So this year, I made uh, little hand-carved wooden toggles for the vests, which I think just finished them perfectly. And I really liked how they turned out. That was a good, that was a good addition. <laughs> in May, uh, I can't really find anything I made in May uh, exclusively. But I do have to say, in May, I had my absolutely most successful market I've ever had which was just so good for my soul. And I know money doesn't equal happiness, but to be able to meet so many people that had seen my work online or had been following me for a while and like I finally got to meet them or they could see my products in real life, that was just so affirming and just so heartwarming. And I knew I was doing the right thing, you know, right time, right place, that kind of feeling. So... That was a crazy market. I almost sold out of all my clothes. I sold out of all of my socks. It was bunkers and I was just so grateful to be a part of it. So May is probably one of my happiest months. <laughs> Moving on to the rest of winter down here. June, I was still working on ugly socks. You know, I had to recoup all my stuff that I'd sold, but I also started working on a project for myself. So in June, I started working on the Copenhagen cardigan by Petite Knit. It's just a really beautiful classic cardigan. It's probably one of my most treasured pieces that I've ever made. Um, I'd never done a cardigan from top down either so that was you know learning a whole new method of doing things which was really fun as well and I love that cardigan. I live in it. I think it is so special and I can't wait to work on some more of her patterns which I actually have some that I need to get started on. In July, I worked on my poppy party dresses. Now, these dresses were just something that came to me. I wanted to make some really loud, fun, bright dresses with some of the fantastic fabrics that I have. I have so much fabric next to me here, and I just wanted to make something from what I already had. So I wanted to clear out my stash, and those were just such fun dresses. They took me four days I think in the end and those were like four full days of sewing um if you want to see the whole video of me making those dresses I will link it somewhere um they were really fun and I actually do have plans to make some more for the summer period I just haven't started them yet oh in August I made my patchwork curtain now that was a weekend long project and I love it and every time I wake up in bed I just see it and I just love it if you want to see the video of me making it again I will link it somewhere on the screen in September I was traveling I took a holiday for three weeks and it was fantastic I went all over the UK I sourced a lot of beautiful wool and fabrics and so many delicious op shop finds you would not believe <laughs> I came back with a very full suitcase and Coming back from that holiday, I just felt so refreshed uh, creatively and artistically and I just wanted to get back into making and sewing and knitting. So I think that was a really wonderful refresh that I really needed. Um, on that holiday, I knitted some socks. That's probably my creative outlet while I was traveling. Lots of train rides, lots of train rides. So. Plenty of time for knitting. When I came back to actually creating in October, I was just full of life. I was just ready to go. I made so many new things. I drew out full designs, which are in the front of this book, actually. Ta-da! Um, I just came back so invigorated. So I'd sourced some really beautiful cottons and I made dresses, I made shorts, I made pants. I also want to add some skirts and some more tops into that collection, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, it was just such a, oh, such a fun month. I made my ruffle tops too, which I need to make more of. I love them. I want one for myself. So October was such a fun month. It was just 
every day I had off from my other job, I was just sewing up a storm. I lived in here. And then coming up to November, I was still working on a lot of my little projects, but November was pretty big for markets. So I had two markets in November, which were each very big and I had to travel for them. And they were great. They were great markets. I was exhausted, but they were great markets. They were pretty successful, you know, coming up to the holiday period. I made decent sales, which is always really nice. And now we're in December. I did my last market of the year a few weeks ago, which was really nice. It was my first outdoor market in like six months, but we were very grateful that the weather was just perfect down here. Uh, and I worked on making Christmas presents for my family and friends. I made little Christmas PJ sets and little shorts, which were really fun and just easy projects to work on. Um, and I've been doing some knitting and that's about it. I went back and visited family uh, during like the Christmas period and now I'm back home and I'm tired. <laughs> I am feeling a little unmotivated, a little uninspired and I think that's kind of normal this time of year. It's been a pretty big year, both in personal life and work life. It's a lot. So I'm really taking this time to just sit in it, you know, reflect on the year that's been, think about what I want to do in the new year and just work on little projects. And that's, I think, ah, there's an ant on me. Don't. But coming up to 2024, I don't have a lot planned and I don't know if that scares me or excites me that I look out onto the horizon of what 2024 is going to be and I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of my business, in terms of projects. I don't really have anything lined up yet and it's kind of freeing to know that I don't have to meet any deadlines yet. I can just make the making sake. I can have fun with it. I can take my time. That just sounds like heaven to me. I feel like the last few months of this year while being incredibly fun and you know, having markets and being so motivated to do things I've spent so much time in my sewing room the past few months that now I just kind of want to not be in here and that makes me a little sad but I kind of can see why that I just spent so much time working on projects and sewing and putting so many deadlines on myself that it kind of lost the fun out of sewing so I've taken a step back I haven't touched my machine in almost two weeks now which is insane but I think it's good it's good to have those breaks so that when you go back you are refreshed and you want to be in here you want to make you're not just making for making sake sake so I think in 2024, I'm going to be doing a lot more scrap fabric projects because I have so much scraps on hand and I love being able to use those fabrics in, you know, small scale projects or doing like patchwork jackets like these bad boys here. Now, I don't think I'll be doing anything of that scale again because that was a lot of work. That was like 40 hours work per jacket. I'm not doing that again. So let's just forget about that. But I really want to work on using up all my scrap fabrics and just like learning new creative ways to use up all those impossible scrap fabrics. I think that is my ramble <laughs> done. Uh, it's so nice looking back at the year that's been and you know seeing all the projects I was going through my Instagram stories and just going through all these really beautiful memories of things that I've made and markets I've done and just interactions with people because sometimes you just kind of forget like if I sat down here without doing any of that homework I would have thought that eh, nothing really happened this year it was just another year of markets and selling stuff it's it was fine but to actually take that time and reminisce was really lovely so I hope you found this video interesting even though it was me just talking so much <laughs> um, I really enjoyed making it and I'm excited for what 2024 brings so thank you so much for watching if you feel like liking please do so subscribing if you feel like it and chucking a comment down below if you so please I could not get that out <laughs> bye happy new year